right, welcome to this conference uh, presentation. Uh, the title is Predicting Recoverable Material Stock in Buildings Using Machine Learning with Demolition Audit Data as a Case Study. And I present, I'm Jens Hunjewitz uh, from ETH Zurich, the Chair of Circular Engineering for Architecture. And I present on behalf of Natalia Kobilinska, who led this research to, uh, but couldn't be here today. And of course, all the other co-authors that you can see here. So when you demolish a building nowadays, they're approximately 60 years old, maybe on average. They don't come with a handy BIM model. And you don't really know the materials that are included or have an estimate about the materials that are included without actually going there and doing an in-situ visit most of the time. So in this research, we focused on a way to automate material stock estimation for existing buildings. And with that method, we could uh, improve visualization and quantification of urban uh, material stock. We could potentially aid reuse agents to help them see where they could recover materials. And we can also help probably with demolition project planning uh, for these buildings that will get demolished. So the goal is to predict quantities of materials uh, of diff for any residential building in the local context of Zurich based on a building's general char characteristics. So these general characteristics can be attributes like volume, footprint area, or age of a building, information that is obtainable from public records, even though they don't come with all this data. So the city of Zurich has this information most of the time available even for all the buildings. And then we could have a data-driven approach to have a good estimate or as good as possible estimate uh, based on a certain combination of these parameters, what materials are to be expected when demolishing these buildings. So for data-driven approach, you need data, and our idea was to use the pre-demolition audit records that already are collected in the city of Zurich uh, as an underutilized source of data to make these predictions. So the goal is to create then this data set with the features that I mentioned before, and then the labels, so the material quantities for each uh, building, uh, given, given uh, these pre-demolition audit records. So to create this table was a bit challenging because these pre-demolition audit records <laughs> come, uh, even though they have a suggestion how they should look like, they come in various formats and uh, mostly PDFs. So we did also some manual processing to actually cre create this table. And not every audit report mentions all materials, so we decided for five labels, wood, metal, mineral waste, which includes concrete or brick, and glass or roof tiles, and, and roof tiles, because these were the five that went, were mentioned the most. Our data set uh, was based on pre-audit uh, records from 2018 to 2022, so over four years, uh, we had 407, 407 uh, of these re records that we uh, used to create this data set. So it's a rather small data set, uh, but as you will see, it served its purpose for this initial study. So the data set is available. Um, you can, if you scan this QR code, you can also see the data in uh, geolocated for, the, for Zurich. So you can see where these buildings uh, were demolished and also the materials that were recorded, so if you're interested. So how did we make use of this data? We trained uh, three supervised machine learning models, and two of them were ensemble tree algorithms, the random forest regressor and the extreme gradient booster. Uh, we chose these models because they can handle mixed data input, and they were also used in previous studies, studies on relatively small data sets, so we thought it's a good fit. Then we had a third multiple linear regression model that served as a baseline for comparison. So the process was relatively standard. We cleaned the data set and we trained each model for each of the materials individually, also because the data set was relatively small and not all five labels were included in each record. And then we 
trained the models uh, in Google Colab with a pipeline built with SkyKit Learn open source uh, tools. And then we used 15% for the testing set. So the more detailed discussion you can find in the paper, the model that cons was considered most successful in our case was the random forest regressor. The multiple linear regression was rather simple. Uh, it, w it was outperformed by the other two models and the extreme gradient booster was maybe a bit too powerful. Uh, we had problems with overfitting um, when, when training the models. Um, so the results you see here are only for the uh, random forest regression model for wood, mineral waste, metal, glass, and roof tiles. And you c we use two metrics uh, for, for, uh, uh, for the assessing the results. Uh, the coefficient of the determination R squared uh, demonstrated for most cases the ability to explain approximately 60 to 70 percent of the variability in the target values. Uh, the exception was roof the roof tiles. Uh, none of the models was really able to kept, uh, to estimate the roof tiles uh, well. Um, I, I'll discuss that in a moment why this could be the case. And the other one was the mean absolute error metric that is maybe a bit more intuitive. So it provides insights into the average difference between the target values and the predicted values. So for example, for wood, you see that the uh, average difference from the actual value was uh, 7.3 tons and then you can of course you need to see um, see that in relation to the standard deviation of the values so it's lower so yeah so and uncertainties uh, about the data quality were the main challenge uh, for several reasons um, we had to pr progress some of the values manually, so it's hard to know how much human error is, is really in there. And there was also ambiguity in data. For example, the roof tiles were often recorded in the mineral waste category, so we had to find ways to uh, split them apart. So that could be an, a, a reason why it's not so, it didn't perform so well. It was also one of the smallest data sets, but also glass was small, and performed way better, so it's a bit hard to know why this didn't work. Um, but overall, the results were okay for a first test and the relatively small data set. And the main challenge is now to uh, have a more a better b database that can be used then for, for, uh, for better mod training of better models and or also more continuous um, data, data use. So what we did, we um, suggested to the city of Zurich how they could improve this process while still being able to uh, um, comp uh, to uh, still follow their existing processes. So instead of having these suggestions and, ma and PDFs that everyone can hand in, we, a web form would, would make a lot more sense so you can give more structured categories that they can fill in, also checking the formats uh, as they type in for errors. And then you save them in two databases. One is for the UGZ, which is the body that handles these requests, so they can still use their PDFs and documents that they, they're obliged to, do, to use. And then an, have another database um, that is also machine readable, could be merged with other available databases in the city of Zurich and then used for more continuous learning and uh, of, of such models. And of course, if you have this, you could make it also available to the public or stakeholders that are interested and actually can use this data for better reuse and planning. So overall, the pre-demolition audit records uh, seem to be a promising source for to, 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 uh, uh, to be used for uh, reuse estimation, material quantity estimation. Um, but the approach to this data collection should be improved uh, so that, we do, that it's easier to do it automatically. And of course, there, once the data set is larger, there's also possibilities to improve the models or, ha or have even more powerful models that, that can be trained upon this data. Yeah, that was it. Um, if you have questions, I 
try to answer them. Thank you. Thank you.